All right, so we are resuming the discussion of um, the final exam from last semester. And last time we were right here on line 141, which is uh, calculating the address of either the L or the R member of the structure that is pointed to by a pointer that in return is pointed to by update pointer. All right, so now that that part is done, let's move on to the next parameter that we need to push. So according to the C code, the second to the last parameter or argument is local variable V. So we have local variable V. The one plus is correct because we already have the last argument already pushed at this point. So this one plus is gonna compensate for that and then we add the stack pointer to it. And at this point, um, on line 146, C has the address of V, the local variable V, and we are supposed to pass it by value, which means you know, we need one D reference, and then we push it on the stack. So that is correct. <coughs> and then we move on to free PP. So now we have to go back to see how free PP is supposed to be passed. I'm going to do the split screen thing. You know, just this way, it is easier for me to keep track of where we are and also to refer to the actual C code, which is displayed way earlier. So free pointer is also supposed to be passed all by itself. So right here, we have two plus here, which is also correct because at this point, we have two bytes of arguments already pushed on stack. We calculate the address, and then we push the address on the stack. Ha <laughs> ha! We're supposed to push the value on the stack, because as you can see here, this is not m percent free pointer. So that means you know, right here, um, before we push it, anytime before we push it, uh, we have to do a, um, so I'm going to say add the following code to def the reference to the value. So LDCC, oops, would do the trick. There we go. All right. So now we have the uh, call sequence, <clears throat> which is uh, to push the return address. So this time the return address is wrong here. It is supposed to be a dot six plus, but I cannot just change that because I have to kind of comment and say uh, incorrect. Uh, offset to the return uh, address and instead this should be LDIC comma dot six plus because you know the instruction that we need to come back to is the increment D over here offset zero offset one offset two offset three offset four offset five offset six so six would be correct so we push that on the stack and then we JMPI to add node, which is what we're supposed to do. We're, we're supposed to call add node recursively. And when it comes back, we have to um, get rid of the three arguments or three bytes of arguments that are still sitting on the stack. <clears throat> and then we increment A because you know, A has the return value of the function call and we need to add one to it as the actual uh, return value, and then we go to the actual the, the label of add node uh, return, which simply performs the usual return uh, code. So that means, you know, in terms of the C code, we are done with this, and so we are. I'm just scrolling down in the C code here so that I can show you where we are at. Actually, at this point, I can probably be unsplit. Okay, so let me quit one screen because I'm just unsplitting. All right, so this is the um, the else of the, okay, if you just look at the label here, this is corresponding to the else branch of the nested conditional statement in the then branch of the outermost if statement. So you kind of have to refer to the C code to um, get a sense of where we are in the code. And the C code is part of the PDF that I gave you. So you can always do you know, kind of, as you watch the video, you can cross reference with the C code. All right, <clears throat> so let's see what this is trying to do. We are trying to see if the thing that is pointed to by a pointer that in return is also pointed to 
by 3PP is no or not. Okay, if it is not no, we got something to do. Otherwise, we have to go to the else branch. So once again, we are tracking, this is the offset. This is the address. Okay, so this is the offset. This is the address of 3PP minus the stack pointer. This is going to be the address of 3PP. And then this is 3PP itself. This is the whatever P, free PP is pointing to. And then now register A is whatever uh, the expression is calling for. Okay, this is that. So checking register A to see whether it's no or not is indeed correct, you know, the correct thing to do. But since there's an explain, explain what is or should be in the mentioned register, um, that is you know, register A, because register A is the only mentioned register in, on line 180. So I'm going to have to say register A is um, that expression. But you can see how you know I have to track every single one before we before I get to this point. So that means so an answer that looks like this uh, without any evidence of tracking is not going to be getting at least not getting full point. All right, so the JZI going to add no return zero is correct because in the original C code, um, if this expression is false, the else branch you know, does return a uh, value of zero. So the corresponding code here is the then branch. So now the uh, what I need to do is to make sure the then branch is jumping around the else branch at the very end here. All right, so it is jumping around the else branch because the else branch of returning a zero is here. It loads simply a zero here. So this is branching around it all the way to the actual end of the function, you know, which returns to the caller. So that is correct. Okay, so I just made sure that the structure of the innermost then branch of the conditional statement is correct. Okay, so now we got a few statements to implement. Okay, this is the first one. All right, so let's check out here what we are doing here. <clears throat> so this is adding register A to register B, and it's relying on register A still having uh, the expression of um, the reference of the reference of 3PP, which is still there. Uh, because you'll be got that you know on line 179 so that means you know just by adding the offset to member V uh, we get to the address of member V so that means uh, after this add instruction here register B is the address of member V which is fine because at the end what we want to do is to store to member V. So the, the, the reference is right here. Um, it is um, with the referencing because we need to update that location. So the only dif difference between the right hand side and the left hand side is on the right hand side a dereference is always a load. On the left hand side a dereference is always a store. Cool. Um, and then we need to uh, compute the right hand side in register C which is just the local variable V. Offset, address, aha, we are not supposed to store the address of local variable V to member V. So I need to add the following code to get to the value of local variable V, LDCC, there we go. All right, and then the next one, uh, this clears the register C and then we uh, proceed to get the offset to member L, add it to, and then add register A, which at this point still has, um, you know, this expression here. So that is correct. So we store the zero into whatever B is pointing to. So that is also correct. And then this one is eh, kind of the same deal, except um, register C is continuing to be zero. That's fine. Um, and the rest is correct. And then over here, we are computing the left-hand side. So this is also correct because uh, this is the offset, this is the address, and this is the dereference. Oh, wait, hold on a second here. 
So what, the way this is done right now is going to overwrite the uh, parameter update pointer instead of up, instead of overwriting what it's pointing to. So I need to add the following. So we update what uh, update pointer points to. So at this point, we have a LDB B over here. So the B is uh, by the end of line 208, register B is going to be update pointer, which is by itself a pointer. And then we store uh, register A, which is, you know, which has been preserved all along here, which is, you know, this expression, double the reference of free PP. Then we store that to whatever update point is pointing to. So that's another change. And then over here, we need to increment whatever free point free PP is pointing to. So I have lost track of whatever free PP is pointing to because all this time we are uh, preserving um, what <laughs> the double dereference of free PP. So a single dereference of free PP is not there anymore. So what we then, what we need to do is to recompute it. Uh, this is offset. This is the address of. This is actually your free PP, and this is where P free PP is pointing to. So register A is uh, whatever free PP is pointing to. We increment that, and then we store that back to whatever free PP is pointing to. So that is correct. Okay. So at this point, uh, B is free PP. So the dereference of free of B is um, whatever free PP is pointing to. So this code is actually correct. There's nothing wrong. All right, so we uh, return the one because that's what the C code is calling for. Okay, this is commented out C code right here. And then we go all the way to add node return. <clears throat> Else zero, um, you know, also wants to return a zero. So that's why we are putting a zero into register A. And then we get to this point and we are uh, returning to the caller, except you know there's one missing instruction because JMPB is missing. So to spot these things, okay, one is you can do it by rote learning, okay, but that is not recommended, okay. You really have to understand what each of these three instructions are doing because I can give you a different sequence of instructions that would do the same thing. So by memorizing just these three instructions to mean return means that it is likely that you cannot recognize other patterns to be able to do exactly the same thing. All right, so now we get to main. <coughs> main has got a bunch of local variables. Uh, pool is the first one, so it has an offset of zero. Free pool as, uh, is the next one. So the problem here is free pool is right after pool. And pool needs is a is an array of struct ends, so that means the size of pool is not multiplying MP size, which is the number of elements, by just one because one is, um, okay. So I'm gonna do this. So I'm going to comment out this, and then comment out and say um, change one to and size, okay? Because that is referring to the number of bytes per element in the array. So this one needs to be changed to n size here because we are looking at an array of struct ends. We are not looking at an array of pointers to struct n, which is what free pool is. All right. Um, so there we go. Uh, so that problem is now fixed. And then when we get to root, okay, so when we get to root, uh, this one is fine because it is right after free pool. And the number of elements in free pool is not MP size, it's MP size plus one. So MP size plus one is MP size one plus in post fixed notation. And then we add that to free pool to get to the offset to main root. So that is correct. Uh, free PP is a free pointer is one byte after root because root itself is also just one byte. It is a pointer, and then X is one byte after free pointer because free pointer is a pointer, and therefore it also only takes one byte. And then main LVS is main X one plus because X is the offset to the last local variable, 
and it has a size of one. So this part is all correct. <coughs> so we do the, the allocation here, and as usual, I put a bookmark here, and then I skip all the way to the end to make sure that I am deallocating everything as well. So I am deallocating here, and this is a typical return sequence, uh, popping the return address into register B, and then continue execution where register B is pointing to. So that is all correct. So let's go back to where we left off. All right. <clears throat> so now we have a sequence of initialization of you know, things that are supposed to be in free pool. So this is also going to take a little bit of time to track. Okay. Um, we have main pool put into register B, and that is the offset. This is the address of pool. And the first element is already at this point. So that means the register B actually has the address of pool right now. Okay, so, oops. Uh, no. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> I undid a little bit too much. Um, so I'm going to have to redo this one. And what I wanted to do is to comment here. Okay, so B is the address of the entire array pool. Um, and then at this point, you'll see is the address of the entire free pool. And this um, statement is correct. So I need to explain. Okay, so I just have to say, I mean, this is just, you know, because I have already tracked everything. So it's easy for me to indicate, you know, all of these things. There we go. Oh, the address of pool. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and then we uh, put n size in A, and then we add A to B. So that means you know, B is now the address of the first element, or the second element, excuse me, of pool. We increment C. Okay, so C, whoops, C is now um, free pool. Oops. Bracket one, but it's the address of, and then we store that. Okay, so that is correct, and then we just keep doing this for a while. Okay, we add a to b again, so b is now the address of pool two, and then we increment c. C is now the address of three pool. And then we do the store. So at this point, what is in the destination register, uh, which is B. So register B is our destination register. And B now has the address of pool 3. So that's the answer that I am looking for. Um, and then we track, you know, C is now the address of free pool 3. So you can see how some of these questions will ask you a que some of the uh, comment here will ask you a question, but you won't be able to answer the question unless you have already tracked the registers along the way. So that means it is important to keep track of what each register has as you will read along. All right, and then do a store. And then finally, we have the last one, I believe. So now B is the address of pool four. And then C now has the address of free pool four. We do a store, and then B is now zero. And C is the address of the last element of free pool, because free pool has one element more than pool. So it does have a free pool bracket five. And we now have the address, and that finishes the initialization. So root needs to be initialized to zero. Um, at this point, uh, B is still a zero because from here, and then we calculate the address and then we store to that address. So this is correct. And then over here, we have the offset to free pool. This is the address of free pool, which is also the address of the first element of free pool. And then this is free pointer. This is the address of free pointer. And then we store the address of the first element of free pool to free pointer. Okay, that seems correct to me. <coughs> and now we have this new function call. 
So this one is kind of interesting because now we have add node plus add node, and then so there are two function calls to add node. And the way we do this, you know, it doesn't matter which one you do first. Okay, so for addition, there is no requirement to go from left to right. <coughs> So I think in this case, because there's a five here, and we can see there's a push five here, so you know, uh, the first call is to uh, is for the left hand side of add node here. So we need to pass the address of root first. Okay, this is the offset to root. This is the address of root. We push it on the stack. Check that's correct. And then we push a five on the stack. So this is five. Then we push it on the stack. So that is all good too. So by the time we get to free pointer, we would have two additional items or two bytes of additional items on the stack already. So the one plus is no longer sufficient. It needs to be a two plus. So that means I need to update this line, change one to two because there are two bytes of uh, content pushed on stack. And then we change that to two. Um, right. Um, so by adding BD, uh, we have register B is the address of the free pointer, which is exactly what we need to pass. So this is not supposed to be here. So comment, comment. I mean, you know, just you know, turn it into comment uh, removed because we push the address of free pointer not the value of free pointer. Okay, then we push it on the stack. And then we have the typical way of getting to the return address, um, push it on the stack, and then we call you know, add node. And then here, this is another way of doing you know, three increment D. We simply add three to the uh, stack pointer, which does exactly the same thing. And then over here, we are pushing the return value of the first call to add node, and then we perform the second um, call to add node. So th in the second call to add node, this one plus is correct because one byte is already pushed on the stack, and that's the saved return value of the first call. So this is actually correct. Um, and we put you know, we put the address of root into register C. So I'm going to split the screen again, you know, just so that you know, one screen can refer back to the C code. So what we, where we are at is um, this here. So we just pushed, um, oops, uh, let me go here. So we just uh, got the address of root into register C, and then we don't do anything. So this is important because I'm not pushing anything on the stack. And now I try to um, compute free pointer, or the address of free pointer, which is also correct. You know, the way it's done here is correct. So that means, you know, I haven't pushed anything here yet. Register D has not changed other than this particular decrement here, this push of the return value of the first call on the left-hand side of um, the addition. So that means this line is incorrect to use a two. So comment it out. <clears throat> okay. And then we change this to a one. Change two to one because um, we have not pushed, um, okay, I should probably change it to, because we have pushed only one byte on stack at this point. And that's the return value of the uh, left-hand side of the addition, so that would be the return value of this call to add node. All right, <clears throat> so now we start to push stuff on the stack. So we decrement D, we push C, which is the address of root, that is correct. And then we push the two on the stack, which is correct. And then we push uh, register A, which contains the address of the free pointer, and that is also correct. And then we do the typical call sequence, okay? We you know, get uh, dot six plus into a register and then push it on the stack, JMPI to add node. And then when it comes back, it needs one more increment D, okay? There are three bytes of <coughs> arguments still sitting on the stack. So this is added, okay? Um, and 
and then explain what is the destination register. So the destination register is the one that's being changed. So at this point, we just returned, okay, here we return from at node. We clean up the stack so that all the arguments are gone. And the function, the function itself has already cleaned up the uh, return address, so that is not on the stack anymore. Anymore. So that means you know, what is sitting on the stack right now is the return value of the left-hand side of the addition. So we'll say your know, register C is the right-hand side of the addition, which we pushed earlier on the stack. So increment D pops it, okay, and then we add C to A. Register C has uh, the return value of the left-hand side of the addition. Register A has the return value of the late of the last call to add node. So by adding those two together, we accomplish exactly what this statement is supposed to do. And we need to store that to main uh, to X of main, and that would accomplish you know, the store to X of main. And then we need to return zero from uh, main, which is um, Oh, uh, I cannot show you because you know, I was I, I was about to show you the C code, but that's the C code right here. All right, um, we already checked that it's returning, it's uh, cleaning up the stack, you're know, getting rid of all the getting rid of all the local variables, and then the return sequence is correct. So this should be all the bugs that we have. All right, so now I'm going to show you how this is going to be graded. Because you know, there's a key to this particular one that I have um, already you know, kind of automatically generated. So let me get that over here. All right, so I'm going to copy that here. And the way I grade it is I have a you know, kind of specialized program to match um, to do cross matching, but that's not helpful for grading your exam because your exam is on paper. Um, because this class uh, was once taught online during the pandemic, and during the pandemic, people turned in just the text file, and I was able to use a tool to do this. <coughs> I can still kind of do it like this, okay? So, this is allowing me to look at and compare the key versus the answer. Which is actually really handy because you know what is um, it uses color coding to show you know uh, what has changed. So uh, so far nothing really happened. There we go. Um, all right. So this is the uh, this is what I can see you know, when I'm grading. Uh, it says it should be an and, and we can see that you know, that problem is fixed here. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's see. I should only be looking for uh, the uh, these thing here. Um, explain register, okay? I, and I explain that. You know, register A is uh, the value of member V of the structure that is pointed to by a pointer that is pointed to by update pointer. Okay, so I explain that, which is exactly what you know the. The key is telling me what of you know, what I should be expecting. All right, and the um, all the additional comment that I put here, you know, is showing up because you know the in the key, you know, those comments are missing, but they are not important because they are not part of the the answer. Um, the CMP AB, you know, versus CMP BA is right here, um, you know, because the order is opposite. And apparently, I forgot to save it because I remember in class I already mentioned that this should become uh, compare AB. Okay, so compare AB, and then the comment is um, um, order of um, operands is incorrect. Okay, um, but I distinctly remember I mentioned this already in class. Okay, so um, so that is. Done. Um, let's see. All right.
and right here it says you know, um, uh, L and R are reversed okay so I did exactly that I switched um, L to R and R to L okay so that is all done and you can see the um, the grading thing you know has a begin and an end so that tells me you know uh, which block of code I should be looking for uh, you know potential fixes all right so this one says you know the following LDBB is extra and I caught that problem and I commented it out and explained why it should be removed and then here we have a missing the reference and I fixed that by adding the additional the reference here okay so that is correct here we have um, bad return address okay so the dot five plus is a bad return address it should be dot six plus so I got that fixed very good um, and you know I put in a bunch of your know, obf obfuscation kind of uh, uh, deal here um, and do, 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 do. all right apply obfuscation so that's n that has no impact to whether the code is correct or not so that's fine um, so moving on all right so here we have um, explain the register it should be um, double the asterisk of three pointer okay this is the key this is actually my answer so that is correct and then over here we have a missing the reference and I add the reference back, back here so I caught that one and over here there's also another missing the reference and I added that the reference here as well okay Obfuscate is not something that we are concerned about. Uh, missing the missing JMP instruction, I just added that one here, but I did not explain it. Okay, so I should probably go back and explain that one. Okay, so we'll say missing JMP to continue execution. All right. And then in uh, over here, uh, struct size, you know, so the uh, the one here is supposed to be n size and you can see how uh, that is fixed and I provided an explanation as well okay so that part is done um, obfuscation so nothing too special so right here we have explanation of the register you know the uh, destination oh explain what is in the red in each register and I explained that here so that is correct <clears throat> moving on uh, again explain registers um, so you know it is the address of pool 3 that's register X and register um, Y which is the other register um, oh this is only asking about the destination register so explaining register B is fine so I got that uh, stat offset is needs to be 2 plus and I fixed that problem with an explanation so that's good and then over here we have an extra the reference and needs to be removed and that's exactly what I did I commented out the extra LDBB so I caught that one and then the next uh, let's see apply push red um, alternative push Okay, so that's fine. You know, this is not a problem. Um, obfuscate, obfuscate. Okay, right here we have the uh, stack offset needs to be one plus, and I changed it from two plus to one plus, so I caught that one as well. Um, this is just alternative. They are basically they are it's still correct, and then I have a missing. Uh, include uh, I mean excuse me a missing increment D and the missing inc increment D is now here and then obfuscate explain register what is in the destination register um, it is the left hand side of the addition this I spelled out the really long version here but in my actual explanation I just say the right hand side of the addition which is basically the same thing so I got that one answered and that's it okay so I actually did catch every single mistake that was sprinkled in this particular file and the answer is no I did not read the key as I worked this out so I was reasoning everything out the way that you also should be doing in the final exam all right
So there it is that, okay, perfect timing. And I'm gonna uh, stop the recording and uh, upload it to YouTube.